Okay, good morning. The sun's finally out and the car booters are out. I've got a boot sale or flea market jewellery haul to share with you. I don't get a lot of these, so I'm really going to enjoy it. Got some lovely pieces from costume jewellery all the way up to fine gold and silver. Stick around, find out what I got. Okay, so shall we get started? Let's start off with my favourite piece of the entire day. I know what you're thinking, it is just a tie clip. It's probably black enamel set with the diamond. And it is fully hallmarked, nine carat gold, seven and a half grams. And this one, I have found they done for mobile oil. So this is oil advertising, nine carat gold, set with a diamond, seven and a half grams. Now I bought this off trade, who were going to melt the gold and i paid 120 pounds so i've paid you know 180 dollars something like that for this tie clip but that's the gold value they didn't take into account the diamond they didn't take into account it's a saleable item they didn't take into account it's mobile oil okay i did find a couple of uh, similar pieces when i was searching i just searched for pegasus and jewelry and here we have just a little pin with the black enamel set with a ruby with the uh, Pegasus. And this one is a mobile oil 10K Pegasus uh, pin. They sold that for $100. And here we have a gold one set with a diamond. Yeah, and that one is in 14 karat gold on sterling silver. So I've done a little bit of research on there. Well, there's 120 pound, 130 pound of gold so that's a real nice oil related find i bought a nice job lot of a dealer i know um i'm gonna share with you i paid 50 pounds for this little job lot so that's about 70 dollars we'll start off with this beautiful carved but almost in the raw jade bead necklace so Chinese jade, beautiful thing. You can see all the carving. If I can get in close, you can see all the stones are carved. Beautiful. Um, and then it's sort of polished, but it's not over polished. It's almost in the raw form. Now I test all my stones, including my jade, with the Presidium gem tester. So these are jade, tested and confirmed. I also had these, which are jade again. Absolutely stunning colors on these. Now, this isn't old at all. It's got a nice pull string there to close it in. So it'll fit pretty much any wrist. And you've got a real nice uh, five-strand jade bead necklace. Again, tested on the Presidium Gem Tester. That thing was worth its weight in gold, I tell you. I also had this most beautiful malachite carved bead necklace. Look at this stone. Beautiful. So we had a nice malachite necklace. I had this, which I believe is, it's almost like a flabber necklace. It's that long where you'd put it on and then you just tie a knot in it. Um, but I think it's, it's Murano, certainly Italian, but I think it's Murano glass. It looks like those glass sweets used to get. Look at that beautiful thing. So there's that. I had a sterling silver fob. Now this is fully hallmarked on the back. What we're looking for is the lion assay mark. There you go. And this was for Leeds Western AF Cup, runner up from 1925-26. On the front there, that will be nine carat gold. So I had that. And then I had a final piece, which was think it's uh, an American eagle. We have a beautiful eagle. The box itself is worth money, just the box. Um, vintage boxes sell well. So we have an absolute stunning, beautiful marcasite eagle set with a garnet eye. Now I didn't actually see it when I looked on the day because it was hidden behind the bar there, but it is a silver example. You can see it just up there. 
didn't actually see the stamp silver on that but uh, that turned out to be a nice treat sterling silver eagle absolutely stunning and this came from a box from Burma Regent Street Burma is obviously going to be the make another country Regent Street of London but a real nice beautiful box as well um, so that was that little group and I paid 50 pounds for that group you know it was say about 70 dollars but real nice the jades are stunning the eagle breathtaking um off a, another dealer i bought two pieces i paid he wanted eight and 15 and i offered him 20 quid for the two so i paid about 27 dollars for the two and we have this one first which is a sweetheart brooch now again i've tested the stone it is an amethyst and this amethyst is about a centimeter wide so it's a good size so a little silver sweetheart brooch beautiful little thing and it is only stamped 925 not a full set of hallmarks i can't date it but beautiful little brooch and i had this stunning absolutely stunning garnet ring set in sterling silver i think it's a size n n and a half in the uk beautiful ring so the two of those owe me 20 pounds This little brooch here, stunning brooch, I bought from a charity shop a little while back. I haven't got around to filming yet. Now, there's no marks on it. It looks handmade. Um, the lady in the charity shop said, oh, half a dozen people have been in with it. I glass looking at it. No one can find a mark on it. Anyway, they wanted a fiver for it, which I paid. Um, I think it's silver, but I'm going to have to acid test it and really check. But it's a really unusual, I think it's like a dragonfly uh, brooch. So there was that one. This I love. Wrote on the box, it says, made of Iraq silver, scenes in Iraq. I can't even pronounce the rest of it, but uh, there you go. That's what it says on the box. And this owes me six pounds. I'm not 100% what it is. Now, is it a donkey or is it a camel? Because it has got a hump. It's got a hump here, pointy ears. Oh, I can't hold that still. And it's made almost like chain mail. You know, it's wire work, if you like, but thick wire work. So it's silver. Without a doubt, it's a Iraq silver. Not sure what grade that is, whether it's 900, 925. I haven't looked it up. A really really unusual what do you think do you think that's a camel do you think it's a donkey what do you think it's got pointy ears but it's also got a hump on the back so for me it'd be a camel but i don't know but really really unusual love that do you think i can find another one to get an idea of what they're worth nope not yet anyway I've had another type in. This one, however, is in base metal or gold plated with like a marble stone insert that's been carved and dyed with the Masonic emblem. Masonic being the Freemasons. And we have a little Freemason uh, tie clip. That cost me 50 pence. 50 whole pence, about cent, not even, well, not even a dollar. 75 cents but that in the center is a white stone i think it's marble and then they carved the masonic emblem in and then stained it so a nice little 50p find there i love it when the summer boots come and i managed to find some you know real nice 50p stuff a lot of my gold over the years has come out of costume jewelry boxes where they said there's no gold in there and i've gone through it and i found gold but with the situation of the lockdowns for the last two years, I haven't really had a lot of jewellery. But if you go back to my early videos, it was jewellery in every single video. 
and I'm hoping to get back to that. As the weather's turning now and the boot sales start back up, it'd be nice that the public come out and I can start getting some beautiful jewellery. This is nice. I have no idea what this stone is in the centre. It could just be glass, but it's a possibility of it being a stone. I'm going to have to find out. Um, I'd say Indian looking at it. It is in silver. Um, I think it's 900 silver is stamped, not 925. It's 900. Um, it is stamped piece. Now, I paid a fiver for that. So about $7, seven and a half dollars. But a nice little thing. Put that on a nice chain. You've got a beautiful necklace. These are nice. I was at the stall in Splot and I dug these out and a couple of other pieces out and I asked him the price and he said a pound each. And I come to three pound. Well, he had an entire tray full of jewellery. He said, take the entire tray for a fiver. So I took the tray. Um, I've sold the, the other contents on and made a profit. So really, they don't owe me nothing in the next couple of pieces. But still, I think they're Bakelite. You know, everybody goes nuts for these cherry amber Bakelite beads and all the rest of it. These, I think, are Bakelite. But I think they're set in gold. There's a hallmark on both of the um, loops but I can't quite read it. My eyes are not good enough. Uh, I need to get a stronger eye loop. But I'm confident they're in gold, and I think they're 14 karat gold, because it looks like 585, but I've got to uh, get a stronger eyeglass to check. But they don't owe me nothing. Originally, they would have owed me a pound, but I bought the box for a fiver, and I've already made a profit. So that was good with them. I had a couple of other pieces. I don't think I've pulled them out. Oh, yeah. Nothing major. You know. I had some shell jewellery. Um, I was going to chuck this back on the boot sale. And when I looked, shockingly enough, people buy shell necklaces. You know, So I thought, well, I'll put, a, put the group on. There's a group of shell necklaces there. And I had this, which is a celluloid or a Bakelite again bangle. It came in with the job lot for the fiver. And there was another one or two pieces. I can't think where they're gone. So, moving on. I bought a job lot of um, a dealer that came to Splot. And I've paid him a lot of money. I've paid him something like 80 pounds, something like that, for the job lot that you're going to see. So eighty pound, it was about one hundred and ten, one hundred and twenty dollars, something like that. Um, I'm gonna start off first of all with a Seiko watch. Now this is running for cer a certain length of time. Now it's an automatic, so as you wear it, it winds itself up and works. That should be enough. Not yet. I'll have to wear it for a bit. Now, I wore it, and it runs for about an hour, hour and a half, and then stops. So I'm not sure why. It's got quite unusual uh, see-through back. But it's a nice, real nice gents watch. Is it going on now? Let me see if I can get it to wind for a minute. But as you wear these, they wind up then as you're wearing them. There you go, it's going now. But it stops. It'll run for an hour or two and then stop. So I don't know if there's any watch experts can tell me why, whether it just needs a good service or what, I don't know. But you can see it's running there. So a nice Seiko watch. Now, that should be £100 of anyone's money, providing it's running tidy. Especially when it's got the date... And the day on there so that's the first piece um we're not though there's another watch or somewhere okay, i bought two of them okay we have another seeker watch this one's a much older watch though Now, I don't know if this is battery or wind up. If it's wind up, it's not working because I've tried winding the winder on the side and it's not running. So I'm hoping it may be a battery and I can get a battery put in there. But it's a beautiful looking watch. 
So I've had two Seiko watches. Neither of them are gold. They're in a gold plate. And this one, yeah, it's still going round. But they, aren't they good-looking watches? Real nice. Now, whether they get sold or whether they get put into a little watch collection I may have to own is another thing. I haven't decided yet. I love watches. I can't afford to buy real nice watches from the shops, so or to buy them at the car boot sale is just as good for me. Um, I had a pair of, well, I've had a few costume pieces off this gentleman. I tell you, he turned up, he said, I got no silver, no gold. I'm digging through it, pulling pieces out. I turned like that, and another dealer from Spot, I know, she had a handful of silver and gold. I didn't get it, though. So, anyway, there's a pair of, I like that colour on that one better, costume jewellery earrings. So, gold tone. But they're signed. These are French, and they are by, I cannot pronounce it, that. Ishi de Berry, I think, Paris. And believe it or not, from my research, they pull in really, really good money, even for costume jewellery. They're asking like 30, 40 pounds for a pair of earrings for costume jewellery. So I was really pleased to get those. They weren't the only costume jewellery I had off him. I also had a French... Um, ring now when i saw it i'd be honest with you i thought it had a danish look to it you know it had a look of jensen um and it is stamped on the back i k i t a ikita ring again it's another french make another designer and again these prices of these were all over the place from a five i like to 40 quid um i don't rate it i just thought it was danish i thought it was a you know vintage 60s 70s design uh but french again you know People are buying them. Another piece I had off him, costume jewellery, is this beautiful Scottish agate Celtic brooch. It is stamped on the back, Wea, W-E-I-H-A-R. I think that's Mary Wea. But typical Celtic or Scottish agate brooch. They don't sell for fortunes, you know, they're like 10, 15 quid. But uh, it's a nice thing. This I love. Now, the chain is sterling silver. I can't find a mark on the egg, but have a look at this now. It is beautiful. It's like a Fabergé egg done in green enamel and absolutely stunning. I'm not going to acid test it because it ended end up doing damage. Um, so I'm going to sell it as just a costume jewelry pendant or an enameled pendant on a silver chain. But you know, if these are hallmarked, they'd ask him 200 quid for an egg, an enameled egg, because it's all marked. Can't find a mark in, and believe me, I've been over it a dozen times. I don't like that window behind me. Should have shut the curtains. Um, so yeah, really, really nice. It's so all come in off that same gentleman for that money. Um, let's just want to stick with enamel. This is, we call them ladybird in the UK, but in America they call them ladybugs. And it's made of costume jewellery with crystal stones and enamel. Probably Swarovski crystal or something along M lines, because that's what I've seen them sold as. It's stamped inside, and it's stamped BJ inside. But BJ is Beatrix Jewelry. Um, we have the vintage ladybug, ladybird. And that came in with it, as did this. There's a mark on this as well. What was this? I think it's the same again. It's BJL, so Beatrix jewelry again i think and we have an enamel pheasant with marker seats in the tail now i know there's a lot of uh, people like to go hunting shooting pheasants things like that uh, i thought it was a real nice good looking brooch again set in costume jewelry not in silver but that enamel is stunning i threw this in just because as I say, I was just making a little job lot pile, and I liked it. And we have an enamel pendant set with a butterfly. 
it's on like um yeah a cotton necklace it's just nothing special but i like the enamel in on there and butterflies but i don't mind having some cheap end jewelry to go with it it can't all be in the big money still sticking with the same seller and the same job lot i had this which is absolutely stunning it's costume jewelry again but look at that you got those talons holding down on the crystal so you got claws birds claws holding down holding the crystal necklace or the pendant i tell you what when i saw that i thought that's going to be good money uh if it's in silver unfortunately it's not stamped anyway and then again i had this one very similar stone looks silver but um no markings on there i could drop some acid on and check i suppose but i'm just assuming at the moment it's all costume jewelry but it even looks silver from the back to be honest with you so i'll have to check them but they were nice I had this off the gentleman. You have the old uh, 17th century ship, maybe delivering the bottles of rum. And we have this enamel pot. Now, this is an advertising pot. Uh, Allied Domique is a spirit and wine company. Now, this enameled pot has been fully hand painted by Chelsea Enamels. And how do I know all that? Because I have the paperwork. Hand-painted, memento, especially produced by the Chelsea Enamels for Allied Domic Ship in uh, Spirits and Wine. So, a nice enamel box produced by the Chelsea Enamels, hand-painted, and advertising a spirit and wine company. Of course, I was going to buy it. So, that was part of the same job lot. This I love. I haven't had a chance to research it yet. We have copper and brass. A real nice, almost arts and crafts look to it. And it's formed as a shield. Now, it is fully signed on the back. But the signature is under that bar. Not the pin. There's a bar going across it as well. And I'm struggling to read it. Um, so I'm not going to do nothing with this until I figure out exactly who it is. But a real nice little brooch nonetheless um it's gonna if they sign in the brooch it's gonna be by somebody who wants you know who likes their work so it's gonna have a bit of value to it but i need to find out who that is i bought a string of coral beads came in for a couple of pounds it needs to be restrung to be honest with you this it's lost some beads or the rope has stretched over the years so what it needs to be done is it needs to, all the beads need to come off and it needs to be restrung or cut it there and retie it so it's tight um but i know a lot of coral is protected now but not all coral is and the age on this stuff now, these are probably from the 30s anyway but nice red natural coral sticks um it's that one i've had a couple of bronze buddhas now they're going to be 20th century souvenir pieces um i had two now I, I bought them off trade i paid a tenner each so i paid 20 pound for them so about 27 28 dollars but they are nicely cast And they are in bronze, not in brass. Just nice little Buddhas. And I, I don't know, people like Buddhas, and I always manage to sell them. So, nice. I had two of those for £20. This one, little Manchester United sterling silver necklace. In this original box now they're not worth fortunes i paid it was either three or four pound for this one um and quite annoyingly while i'm there buying this and I'm one or two other pieces um there was a bit of fuss i didn't bother going through the box 
one of my friends comes over, goes to the box, and pulls out a massive gold hoop for 50p. Typical, in it? But, you know, it is what it is. So Manchester United, and I'm not going to comment whether you support them or not. But this was part of that big parcel again. Didn't see this one. We have a beautiful bracelet uh, in glass, but it's got the gold fleck running through the glass. And this one is fully stamped up. Murano glass, and on the other side, made in Italy. So we have a Murano glass, beaded necklace, um, and it's got the gold flecks running through the glass. So that's really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. I don't know what you think. I'm hoping there's going to be a decent profit on there. And some of this stuff I absolutely love. I love the jade. The jade is beautiful. I love the amethyst sweetheart brooch. Really, really nice. Beautiful thing. Um, don't forget, I need help with this. Camel or donkey. Nice to have her in this original box, though, from Iraq. So, hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for uh, watching. I would appreciate a like, comment, or especially a share. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.